everybody. Wendy Kalinke with Blue Cat Studio. Welcome to another episode of uh, Lunch and Paint. So today we're going to be painting some just fun, simple flowers. And for those of you who got my text message, I realize it showed up like a minute late. I am still learning how to do the whole, like send a text message and I keep forgetting oops, that they actually like are, are monitoring it and, and have to approve it. So I can't just be like, all right, hit it 15 minutes in advance and let you know. Anyway, I apologize. So we're going to begin by toning our, our workspace. So I, we often tone the workspace. Uh, one of the things that um, I was thinking about today as I was planning this was, you know, when we use like a bright orange or a red, it's a lot of work to cover it over and we're gonna be working in a lot of reds and oranges and yellows anyway. So I thought, why not try something a little bit weird, a little bit different, and I'm gonna grab this sort of citron green. So you can mix your own really light green as well. You don't have to use citron. This is one of my favorites though. So it shows up over and over and over again. But if you want to mix your own, anytime you grab the daffodil yellow, that one's a huge one. We always use this one. It's just like my favorite. And some kind of like a teal or turquoise or whatever. We'll kind of get you close to that. So let's go ahead and just get a quick coating here. So if you've got paint pens, grab your paint pens. If you don't have paint pens, also okay. Uh, permanent markers also fine. I think I'm going to try and stick to kind of simple for this one. All right, we'll get the colors going here again, just toning the canvas to start with. And the reason I'm doing that is as we start to sketch and have fun on top of this, if we leave any gaps and we don't manage to cover them over. Oopsie daisy. Sorry, alarm. Whoa, what happened? Okay. Um, you know, if we leave any gaps, well, they're not gonna be white. They'll be this really lovely green color. So that's kind of my, my thought process behind that. So again, just a weird citron green. It's bright, it's springy, it's happy. I know spring's not here yet. I'm going to go skiing this weekend, best effort. But we might as well get, we might as well get in the spring spirit, right? So that's my, that's my thought process there. Okay. So now we've got a good, just kind of basic green going on. Greeny yellow. It's it's pretty bright and pretty pretty loud. So if you would like to get on my text list so that you know, especially after I get it all sorted out, you know when I'm about to go live, um, you can just go ahead and text me at 571-416-7102. Oops, grab your windswatter, guys. And I will add you to my, hey, y'all, I'm going live list. All right, so a couple more things you're going to want to have on hand. You want to make sure that you've got some kind of like a hair dryer because on these lunchy paints, we tend to work pretty quickly because sitting around watching paint dry is probably the most boring thing on the planet, right? So, okay, let me see here. So I grab my little dryer and blast it. I'm hoping this view is okay. I would love some feedback. I know a number of you, um, you know, have painted with me in the past. And so I've kind of been playing with like, hey, how do I show my face? You can kind of see the personality um, behind this, bad hair days and all. Um, but also make sure that the focus is really on the art so you can see that. Because sometimes, you know, if I try and get it all in one shot, you kind of, you don't get like best of either. Oh, Linda says the audio is jumbled. I wonder if that's because I've got multiple devices trying to stream. That's not so great and I'm sorry about that. Let's see, so this one is muted and this one is is good. Hopefully, wow, bummer. If the audio gets really bad, um, then I can always try and let me see about turning this guy off. Does that does that make any difference if I turn this guy off with no mute, no mic and, and no second cam? Do you guys have any, any difference in that? Let me know. If it's still the same, then I'll pop the camera back on. Or if I maybe even, hold up, same. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this here and I'm gonna take one guy completely out. Um, does that make a difference at all? Because I've literally just removed one, one of the devices. Um, so now I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully taking up less bandwidth. We'll see. Okay. Fingers crossed. I'm gonna keep going on this. Oh, it's blowing up a storm. That could also be it. So let's go ahead and um, grab a pencil. You know, sometimes it's fun to sketch. I have some watercolor pencils. I really love these. 
I may need to reconnect. Oh boy. Um, not much I can do. I'm, I'm streaming through a service. Yikes. I'm sorry, you guys. Let me turn this guy off. Put this aside. Okay. All right. Well, so I'll do a lot of do and a little less talk. So I have a watercolor pencil here. It's a light purple. It's just going to kind of go away as we do this. So I'm thinking like a big zinnia. So I think I want kind of something here. And then maybe a couple of smaller ones here. Think of this almost like as like a fabric pattern. You just kind of create a few circles, but y'all can't see that. So let me make that more obvious. There. And then a big circle here. Does that make sense? Looks like Mickey Mouse. And then we'll add another one here. And then maybe one more flower here. There we go. That's a watercolor pencil. So that's how that rinsed off really quick. Still the same. You can understand me just shaky. Is the video quality okay if the audio quality is crappy? Let me plug, see if the if my thing is not in. If the video is good, then I must I figure that's probably more important to you guys, but I don't know. All right, so now I'm just gonna sketch in a few flowers or a few leaves. Again, we're kind of keeping it whimsical here today, not necessarily realistic. Just trying to kind of have some, have some fun. All right. Yeah, and you can see what's going on here. Video is perfect, just my sound sucks. Well, that's lovely. Hey, I know, I wonder. I wonder let me try. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not so sure. All right, never mind. Yeah, Te technique, technique Tuesdays, technique, not always my thing. <laughs> so I'm feeling like for this one, I want to work with some reds, some oranges, maybe some pinks and yellows. So let's do, we're going to change it up a bit. So I'm going to start with a tomato red, tomato red. It's a, just a bright, warm red color. I also want to get a little bit of white. And we love the white more than anything just for helping to kind of um, cover up our, our stuff here. So we'll begin with the red and let's see how that goes. And I want to do the red kind of outline here. Oh yeah, that's fine. A little bit of red here. So in choosing this green color, my hope was to have something that I could fairly easily cover over without having to do a million layers. So. I have a flower here, oops, and the leaf, yeah, that's a leaf covering it. So just on the outline of the flower. And then maybe this guy, I want kind of the inner portion of the flower. And then maybe this guy, I want the inner portion of the flower, kind of red. And maybe this guy will have the outer portion of the flower. And notice, I'm just blocking in the color right now. We will pull a lot of the detail together later. That's kind of the next. And I guess for these guys, we'll kind of do the inner portion, a, a sort of ready color. All right, so we've already got sort of a base, a base pattern going. I'm going to offload my brush onto my, my one of my textbooks, just to get rid of the excess stuff. Okay, here we go. And let's grab some orange and some yellow. So squeezing a little orange, and this is just like a basic sergeant orange on any kind of like of the deco art oranges, whether it's a bright orange or, or I don't remember the other names, but any old orange will do as long as it's kind of bright. And then this is of course the folk art daffodil yellow. So grabbing a little bit of that orange on my brush. I'm kind of working it into the bristles that way if there's any red left over, it kind of combines with that orange. Um, and we'll start to add some some orange kind of in, in this zone here. Some of it will blend with a wet paint that's already there. Starting to fill that in. Again, this blocking practice, it's kind of fun because you can be fairly loose and free and just kind of play. And sometimes playing like this, it just gets, it kind of gets your creative juices going. Just kind of going around that red. Oops, got a little bit extra covered up, so I'm just gonna use my finger to kind of 
uncover it. I'm going to use my finger here to kind of blend. Yeah, in fact, I'm just going to use my finger to blend because, oh my gosh, it is so much easier to blend color, especially if you move in really tiny little, like, gentle circles than it is with a brush. So since we're not working with oil paints, may as well finger paint, right? Just have a nice surface you can wash your stuff on. Okay, I'm going to offload my brush. Oh, I forgot this guy. Let's do that. I'm just going to use the last little bits of orange that are left on my brush kind of smush around and then I'll use my finger to kind of blend, 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 blend. I don't know if you guys saw or not, but I recently posted um, both in the group as well as on the page, just asking, you know, are there any projects or designs um, or, you know, things that you'd like to paint for spring? Uh, I love knowing what you guys want to work on because it gives me great ideas to start creating projects for you. Because, you know, I get my own ideas, and sometimes they're slightly, like, a little out of left field and a little crazy. So we're just doing the best we can. So now, grabbing some yellow. I rinsed my brush. I wanted, I just needed a clean break. I'm going to kind of come in with that yellow, kind of in this, you know what? I need a little yellow, a little orange. So I'm going to do a little yellow, a little orange. There we go. Yeah, it was too yellow. So we'll kind of come in and kind of orangeify in the middle there. So again, kind of yellowy orange, it kind of helps a lot. Kind of bring some of that out along here. Again, using our fingers to kind of get some of that blend in. Love finger blending. It's so much easier. How weird is that? And again, I'm loving this bright green color because it pops, but it's also not so strong that I lose, that I have to do a million coats of color on top of it. And I literally was sitting there like before, like, you know, when I was thinking about this project and thinking my, my way through, like, oh my gosh. What color can I use? You know, this this limey green really is not exactly a traditional. It's not a traditional color for for for, for toning your canvas. But oops, I went right into the to the yellow for that one. So we'll just kind of smush, 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 smush a little bit more. There we go. Fingers, fingers, fingers. I swear, I'm going to convert all of you into finger painters. That's what I know. Okay, so if my audio didn't didn't get any better, do you guys want me to add, try to add the video back in so um, you can see my crazy mug, or are we good just like this? All right, so again, keeping it kind of rough. Like, I'm not going perfect here. I'm just blocking in that color. Like, this is an opportunity to play and have fun. Just making kind of a yellowy orange tangerine because I believe that it's the second I managed to get past or we managed to get past, um, make that one overlap, I think. Once we got past Valentine's Day, it was like my brain said, okay, it's time for some oranges. Oops, I did it there. So I'm feeling orange this month. This is color of the month. We're good. Okay, good. Well, sweet. The less technical stuff I gotta mess with, the better. All right, so now we'll come in. I'm gonna offload a little bit. I don't think I need to rinse. And just grab some pure yellow and kind of bring that into the center here. Smush, smush, smush. Kind of out on the edges a little bit. Now I don't plan to leave the background of this guy that was screaming green. It's just the background to the background. As we say at work, it's the pre-brief to the brief. Oh no, I got some paint on my little text me sign. So if you haven't joined my text list yet, definitely jump on it. Um, I'm slowly but surely learning how to use it. And the idea is that if you want to know when I'm going live, because some days um, I'm like clockwork and some days I'm really not, um, I can always, you know, get you on the list so that you get the notification that I'm going to pop on and you don't miss it or you at least know if it's coming and can decide if you want it to pop on or not. And I'm trying to make sure I don't spam you because I'm not a fan of spam. There 
right, I'm getting just a little bit of yellow. Okay. Again, using your fingers to kind of soften some of it. I didn't soften this. We'll soften that now just a little. Okay. So now we've got some crazy colors, right? And it's looking a little wild. You just come in and blow it. And so what you're going to see is we're going to really roughly block in color and block in the paint. And it's it looks a little bit like a kid did it, which is totally fine. Sometimes it's a really great look. And then we're going to come in a little in a little while with the um, with a pen, and you're going to notice that it just it tightens right up. And that's one of my favorite things to do, like especially kind of in a mixed media setting, or if I'm you know just playing in like an art journal. Instead of trying to paint every last detail, go rough, and then sketch sketch the rest in. Holly says, hey there, very late, boo-hoo. Oh, it's okay. You know the replay is going to be available, so you're good. And my text messaging thing is a little wonky on it today. Or rather, use your error. Okay, I'm loading the brush. Let's give it a quick rinse. Got some oranges. So now we're going to work on some, some, some leaf colors. So per standard protocol, we're going to grab ourselves some mermaid tail teal because, because, because we have to have mermaid tail teal. I'm just gonna place it right on top of that citron green that I used as the backing color because it's already dry. So how about this? Let's get crazy and we're going to make those leaves. We're gonna start them off mermaid tail teal, just pure straight mermaid tail. What? Well, actually, because it's thin enough, it's actually coming out green because you can some of that citron is showing underneath. But it also kind of adds some deep tones, so then I can come over the top of it with some lighter colors if I want to. But if I start too light, then it's hard to kind of bring those deep tones back in. And um, I'm hoping my audio has gotten a little better since we started. I used, I found, I don't know if I got them on Amazon or where, and I think they're like, oh, they're Artist Loft. Okay, I probably got them from, um, Michael's but watercolor pencil, which is so nice for sketching because you just kind of scrub them a little with paint or even like like with your with a wet finger and you can lift you can lift a majority of that pigment right off so it's almost like guilt-free sketching. So here's a little line if I wanted to go ahead and just give a little scrub with a brush and the pigment kind of blends in. And purple's a pretty good neutral, especially when you're working in these in these tones here. You can see it, but then it can also disappear pretty easily. <laughs> Linda says, you got three texts in a row. All your creatives are live. Ay, ay, ay. Well, I'm sorry all your creatives are, we're, we're spamming you, huh? All right, let's see. I think I feel like I did a leaf over here. Okay, here's a leaf. We'll do that leaf there. Again, just blocking it in. Again, we're just having fun. And this is a way if you feel like, I just want to throw down some color. I'm just kind of feeling like I want to paint, but I don't want to have to think or concentrate. You can literally just draw a bunch of overlapping circles and then, you know, do the light to dark or dark to light, depending on how, um, and alternate them, right? So you see I have kind of all the light, the outer light to dark middle surrounding this guy who's dark on the outside, and then this guy here who's not touching any of these, but kind of he can have the dark on the outside too. That was kind of my logic in, in doing that. And because this is the big guy, he's kind of the central focal point. Um, yeah, I'm dropping like bristles everywhere. I think this is probably haven't washed this guy properly or something. I don't know. Right. Eh, out. Okay. Cool beans. So now we've got a basic, and that looks like green, even though it's mermaid tail teal. I am really tempted to grab some ultramarine to play in here, but let's 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 do something else first. So grabbing some yellow and some more of that mermaid tail, we're gonna mix and just get a little bit more of a vivid green. That's very vivid. A little more yellow, and then you can just kind of smush smush some of that on part of your leaf, and it doesn't have to be very accurate. Again, we're just kind of sketch painting, having fun, playing with color. It's very similar to um, one of the projects that I posted uh, recently. Actually, it's not really a project I posted. It's just a, like one of those time-lapse things 
where I was playing. Okay, oh, here we go. Let's take some white now and we'll mix it in with some of that lighter green and we'll just add a little, little kind of extra on the leaf. So I'm almost doing like stripes. So I have the dark color, that green we just mixed, it's mermaid tail, the green we just mixed and a little white on top. And then just add some dimension to the leaves. It's kind of a nod to the fact that even though leaves are green, it's not all one color. That's one of my favorite sort of quick trips. Quick, let's see if I can say that, quick tricks for making leaves interesting and dimensional without actually having like a reference model. Because a lot of times when we paint around here, we get a little whimsical and we don't actually follow references. And that is perfectly fine. So I'm flooding that paint. I don't really feel like rinsing, but I do want, I really do want some ultramarine. There's my, there's my bottle of it. So here's another one that I absolutely adore. Folk Art Ultramarine. This is an amazing mixer. If you want to go super high end, you can buy the, you know, $25 tube, or you can buy the under $3 tube bottle. This one I find, in fact, again, because a lot of what we're doing, especially on paper, um, paper's very, very happy with craft paint. And if you're just starting out, you know, or, or you, you do paint parties, craft paint's the way to go because you get really great results at, you know, really great cost. So now, now that I've got some of that ultramarine here, I kind of smushed it around on my palette a bit. I grabbed some of the mermaid tail to mix it in to get kind of a deep teal or a tealy blue. So there. Oh, I love that. Now that's right there. That reminds me of like deep shadows or something. Elizabeth says pretty. Thank you, Elizabeth. And now if I did the light colors on this side here, I'm going to come in kind of on the other half and add a little bit more shadow to those leaves just for that kind of bluey green. And again, you can just blob it in, covering as much or as little of the mermaid tail as you like. And just trying to kind of keep it interesting. All right, so now we've got the leaves. And again, this still looks more like, like a pattern on a moo moo than it does than it does real flowers. But I think that's all we need from that color. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse. And just give it a quick blast because we're gonna start now working on filling in around the edges. So there's a number of ways we could go on this one. And I guess I would really love you guys' opinion. My default is, oh, let's surround it with like aqua or like a light blue or something like this color. But we could also do like a pale purpley color. So I could use some votes from you guys. What should we do? Should we do like a, a purple something? Or should we do a blue something? Holly, tell me, tell me, tell me, purple or blue? Elizabeth, Linda, what do you guys want? Purple or blue? Because we're gonna cover over this crazy bright um, citron color. I am. I can't decide. I mean, I I know for sure this will look good. Purpley. So I'm thinking maybe this. It's, although it's fairly neutral, I might want to give it a little bit more of a pop. But I do want light. Although the one thing I'm thinking about with this one. Pale M. Oh, help me, Holly. Pale. My one concern is if I have everything light, then it's going to get mushy. But let's see. So I'm going to take this guy. This is a lilac meadow. So if you don't have like a lilac meadow, and I'm guessing most of you don't, you want to see that it's a different and purple. Okay. You could also grab like a dioxazine. In fact, let's do a mix. Let's see if we can do this by mixing. So I'm dry here. All right, I got some put the purple here. A little dioxazine. It's a really deep violet. And now I'm going to mix like a crazy person and get it to a really light purple. Because again, I feel like we always have that dark purple. We don't always have. So grabbing some white. Plus, I know we love mixing colors. Grab some of that dioxazine. Oh yeah, this this brush is not long for this world. So I'm going to blot the purple over on the side and mix in just the smallest amount. Oh, I need way more. So I'm trying to go easy as I mix, right? Like, I don't want to go overboard. 
but I know I need a big chunk of it. So I have a big chunk of white and then I'm just slowly adding that other color. That looks very neutral here, doesn't it? All right, I'm getting all votes for purple. And we shall purple it. Ta -da, a tiny bit of red. Not that red. I'm gonna add some magenta. Okay, y'all, so sometimes like taking tubes of quinacridone magenta is like a lot. I found that there's like a, it's like Royal Fuchsia from Annie's, not Deco Art, but from Annie's. That's a, um, a Hobby Lobby brand. And I basically poured it into one of these squeeze bottles and then I added, squeezed a bunch of the quinacridone in too. And I found it gave me that sort of almost a quinacridone version of craft paint. Okay, so I'm just kind of toning and mixing. So I feel like adding a little bit of magenta to that purple warms it up. Now we've pretty much mixed this guy by accident or on purpose. Overboard mixing means what? Okay, so great question, Holly. So overboard mixing generally means like mixing 10 times too much. So I see this often when I do paint parties, like everyone squeezes a huge amount of paint and then they, they will try and mix their color. They'll pour like combine it and suddenly they'll have a massive puddle of paint when they only need like eight strokes of paint um, and so I always suggest mixing small to kind of get the feel for the proportions and then as you need to mix more you can and so oftentimes and it's really more at paint parties but I also see this with more beginner painters is they end up mixing and then throwing away a ton of paint so since I'm here, I'm going to start to add even like little bits of jaggly something, kind of allow these ruffles or these things to look a little bit ruffled. And I, I may allow little bits of that lime green to show, but not a lot. Especially around the, the leaves, it might be interesting. So I mixed a ton, and you notice I just don't need that much paint. And the other thing is when you mix like a ton, a ton of paint, you end up needing like six palettes, and that's kind of annoying, right? So Holly says, that's me. I can't get it right and keep adding until I end up with more and more and more. And I totally feel you on that one. That is not uncommon. And that's why I'm always saying, hey, start small. Mix just the smallest amount because that's a great way to kind of get the feel and make small changes. And I know I used to do that too. I would end up with these just huge like vats of the wrong color paint or not quite what I wanted. And then it takes way more pigment to mix and change and tweak. And so some of these spots where I covered the, the citron, they're a little too neutral for me. Some of that citron is peeking through. So I'm just gonna come back in with a little extra on top just meaning that my purple got kind of a funny tone. So this is interesting, right? Like the purple is 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 very neutral. But it's kind of nice because I think it then is gonna pop the flowers. So just give it a quick dry here. And this is very rough. I mean, I, I mean it doesn't quite look like a kindergartner did it, but you know, thus far, no special skills or drawing ability here. We're just kind of drawing some basic shapes, some circles, some elongated, rounded triangles, and putting it all together. All right, so that, yeah, okay, that's good. So I have a spot here that looks wet, and just checking it to make sure that it's, it's not, because once you get going with paint pen, you really want to make sure that your other stuff is dry, so you don't wreck your paint pen. So we will come back and paint. Remind me, you guys, that we're going to need to to dot the centers of these things. I have to say, I don't, I don't totally love this purple around it, but I think, but you know, we'll come back and revisit it. For now, I'm going to offload my brush and set my thing aside. Rin actually, offload rinse. And let's do some paint pen. In. So if you have a black paint pen, awesome. Depending on you know what you happen to have. Any number of things are great. Where's my this is the one that works and not my dead one. That's my dead one. I keep thinking I've moved it away or somehow keep thinking it's gonna get better. No, it doesn't. Nope. 
checking the pastas. Hold on. Sometimes all my stuff migrates. All right, I'm just going to go on a Sharpie because that's what I got, and I bet you all of you have those too. So final check. Yeah, okay. So this is a slightly old Sharpie. I think it'll still work. And we're going to kind of understand that somewhere around here we have a center. So you kind of just make a, a wiggly jiggly, you know, wiggly jiggly circle. Here we go. La la la. La la la. Easy peasy, right? And then from here we'll kind of just come out and you can almost create petals. And give them like little ruffly bits along the edges. Little ruffly bits. And this one ended up with five. Cool beans. So then you can kind of take this and ruffle it out, ruffle it out. And you can make them bigger, smaller. You can kind of choose how you want that to, to go. But always try to at least sort of span the gap between the petals. And then this one, I'm just going to take it out. And these ones might get wider, or you can keep them narrower and small. Here, because I kind of started to land in the gap, I just sort of did a little divot and kept going. It's a nice cheat. I'm not a cheat. It's a, it's a trick. I don't know what it is. All right, here we go. Let's kind of pick up from here. And I feel like you're kind of getting the idea. Just keep going, right? Oops, that one's looking a little... Little like I'm trying to draw a castle instead of flower petals. It's all right. And then on these, you can kind of do this. So I can't decide, are these actually zinnias or marigolds? And then on the edges, here's where you kind of have the opportunity to kind of go out and about and kind of bump it and give that, soften that edge so that it now actually looks like a flower edge. So on this one, we could even kind of just soften that edge now. Get it going, maybe add the, the leaf. All right, here we go. I don't know if you're noticing this, but I'm just kind of getting, as I go, I'm getting kind of looser and looser with each flower. I don't know, are these zinnias or marigolds? I feel like structurally speaking, they're very similar. We're kind of using marigold colors. I think I've watched Encanto and got all inspired by that. So now I'm like, ooh, flowers and flowers. Okay, here we'll jiggle jaggle the edge on this guy. So the assumption for this one is that the center is kind of, right, here we go, look at that. So they don't even have to be exactly the same. This one you can just kind of, as long as you're getting concentric with your wiggle jiggle, wiggle waggles, you're good, right? A little extra ruffle in that one, pull it off even if we didn't get it quite quite um, normal. Linda says, this is terrific, reminds me of a zinnia. Well, zinnias are my favorite flower. And why? Because they're like almost instant gratification. Because like you plant the seeds and like two days later they've germinated and they've like popped their little heads above the dirt and you're like, oh hi. So I feel like for the big one, I was a little bit more accurate with these little guys. I feel like I can just kind of wing it because they're smaller and they're less the focal point. Like the big guy with the red that all points down into the yellow in the center, it's, you know, it's definitely much more focused. So if you have a paint pen, paint pens are awesome. If you have colorful paint pens, oh my gosh, you could really go to town. But again, I know that we have a range of supplies available, um, you know, in the audience. And so I don't want to overwhelm you and make you feel like you can't do any of the projects I offer without, you know, buying a million and one supplies. So, hey, here's this with a, with a Sharpie. In fact, it's not even a Sharpie. It's a cheap knockoff of a Sharpie. Let's get some little flowers going on here. Wiggle, jiggle, wiggle, jiggle, wiggle, jiggle. can form some of those petals. And again, it's kind of like lather, rinse, repeat. You, you do the first one super accurate and then you decide kind of how you want to go for the rest of them. All right, so my first leaf, I kind of did nice and straight edge, but what if we kind of did a little bit of a, a tooth on that leaf? I sort of like that. So let's see if I can add some teeth to that leaf. So just kind of like gentle zigzag out. 
but it looks weird because like I've got it all taped up and I'm not doing details there. It'll look much cleaner once we remove the tape. Y'all just have to remind me to remove the tape because I mean that is like the, my favorite part. Because these rough edges always look a little rough. So literally just kind of jigjagging, zigzagging some lines and now we've got some pretty cool details. Dot, dot, goose. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's you reminding me to do the dots. Okay, 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 good. Very good, very good. So let's see, what do I have for dotting? I'm just going to grab like a paintbrush that's kind of, well, that's a really fat one. I need one of those nice, thin, cheap plastic Amazon ones. Okay, so here's a nice, thin, cheap Amazon one. Plastic, if you're not careful and you bend it, it'll like snap. We're going to add some dots in the middle just for fun. So I'm going to go into the red. Just the tip, that tail of my brush, and I'm going to dot some red into the center. So this one you really do kind of have to sometimes dip dot, dip dot, dip dot. Now if you have like the little dotting styluses, you probably will have way better results. So let's get those dots in there. It just kind of adds a nice kind of finishing touch. So I'm going to do the red dots in the yellow centers, although, you know, like a cool teal might, oh, and massive whoopsie dots. A teal might look interesting. Or blue, I don't know. Or purple. I'm, feel, I'm feeling a little, a little frisky with color right now. Let's see here, I'm gonna take some white, some of that mermaid tail. Let's see what we can mix. There we go. Touch of, touch of the blue to blue it up a little bit. All right, I just mixed it, the turquoise. You could use Bahama blue. It would also give you the same result, more or less. Bahama blue is a favorite. All right, and I'm going to just try this out in one of these and see what happens. We'll do some light blue dots. So you do not have to do light blue dots. You could do yellow. I just find myself wanting to kind of mix it up. So I'll probably pick a few of these and do the light blue dots and then maybe do yellow dots in some. Then you could also come in and add a few darker dots if you wanted. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, you guys, that's that's the thing. I don't know if it shows as well on camera, but in real life, a little bit of the mermaid tail dots kind of intermixed in there. It's just, it's a, you know why it works. Because we've got kind of a, a ready orange. And we're adding in the opposite color, which of course is a bluish green. Okay, so that's fun. I like that. Off of the sky. And then we can do these other ones yellow. That way it's not like conforming to a full pattern. Oh, Holly asks, just curious, a stylus. Um, one second, I will just grab one because it's over here. Hold on. Okay, so I just grabbed like three, three different ones. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, basically, it's one of these things that's got a, a stick on it with like a little ball on the end. And these are, and they come in a whole bunch of sizes. So like if you're looking to do like a Zen mandala rock dotting thing, these are great. So I'm going to use one now and I think we'll probably see like the difference. This yellow is super thick. It's kind of weird. All right, so if I plop in here, I think I can then just kind of drop some. And because it's a perfect circle and it's really smooth and there are no seams on it, you can literally just kind of come in and just kind of place dots. It is a little easier. But again, you do not have to have a dot, like a dotting stylus. It's a cool toy. It's a really, really cool thing. Tail of brush works just fine. 
And honestly, I'm just kind of slapping those on so my dots aren't even perfect. But there you go, now you've seen. If you haven't seen a dotting stylus, now you have. So if you have like a Cricut machine, I think these things often come with those as well. Or, or maybe it's for rub-ons. I forget. It came, I got one that came with something and I was like, oh, that's cool. For like burnishing maybe, I'm not sure. All right, so now we've got some cool dots. So now you've got like sort of a variety and by changing up the colors on the insides, I feel like it adds a little bit more rhythm to this. Here is not working for me. I would like to add, I think, some hot pink just for giggles. Let's see how that goes. But I'm just gonna grab some. Oh, it's a Craft Smart brand because that's what's there. And we'll just stick with the dotting stylus. So with the dotting stylus, a more liquid paint works better. My yellow is so gooey, it's acting like heavy body paint, even though it's craft paint. Um These dotting things generally like more liquidy paint because it can just like directly place. But you'll notice I'm like going back to my palette, dot, dip, dot, dip, dot, dip, and so on and so forth. So inner circle folks, I'm very much like, this is one of my kind of favorite types of designs. So I am thinking about coming up with like a cool kind of collage version of this as a bonus. Have to let me know if that's of interest. Okay, yeah. I like that better. That pink warms it up a little. The red just isn't really working for me. So I'm going to even cover or a, a little bit more of the red. The red looks too dark against the yellow. And so it's not having that kind of wonderful warm effect that I was hoping for. So in retrospect, I think where we did the red dots, orange or just hot pink would have been better. So I'm going to tone it a little bit more. That way we kind of just get that warm feel from it. There we go. Okay, Holly wants to see the whole thing. Good. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and blow dry this guy and then we'll remove, we'll remove the, the tape and pretty much call it good. This is your opportunity to sign your project. Some of my dots are already dry, but the pink and red, not so much. All right, that's pretty well set. Sweet. All right, let's, this guy was just to protect my paper. This guy here will come off, oof, pretty clean edges. Look at that. Oof. I'll move my text number thing. Oh yeah. So this is still not, this is still fairly fresh tape, <laughs> as in it hasn't been used like 10 times. So it's still letting me have fairly clean edges. As you reuse tape, sometimes it doesn't stick as well and, or doesn't mask as well. There you go, look at that you guys. Isn't that fun? I'm like really happy with that. So here's where like I do something like this. I'm like, can we just design fabric? That would be fun. Now if you are like, you know, I think we could do more and you want to do more, you could always grab like a white paint pen. Make sure it's properly activated and, and happy. And you could add, you know, ooh, well this one is not happy, but you could add a few like bits of lines and whatnots kind of in some of the, the petals if you like just kind of radiating out from the center just remember whenever you're doing a flower it's always kind of radiating from the center because the whole point of a flower is to attract bees and birds and pollinators so everything is always kind of saying hey come to the center pay attention to me then you know as we get further out you can even kind of set having lines just add a few onesie twosie threesie dots here and there keep it random it's kind of a fun couple extra details and again you don't have to do it on all of them but if you feel like it's just not quite finished it's a great way to kind of finish it out a little bit by just adding a little something here and you can add kind of 
again, try to try to vary it up. So if in one petal you've got a single dot, maybe another one you've got two and three. You could add. And again, I'm just kind of playing now. I sort of was going to celebrate and call victory a little while ago. But since we're here and we're playing, we're just going to keep playing. I can add a little light ziggle zaggles in the, in the leaves. And even add like in some of these, like no, you add more ziggle waggles, right? Zigzags, wiggle waggles, whatever you want to call them. I feel like we're creating our own art language here. And so while it's fairly subtle, it adds just that kind of next level of detail in there, which kind of works, right? And again, you can just kind of have fun here, make it your own, do your own thing. A little bit of highlight kind of pops the leaves, gives them a little bit more motion, maybe. I don't know. I haven't necessarily got rhyme or reason here, just trying to create some, some light and kind of interest. Again, we didn't really like stay inside the lines on a lot of this, and that's okay. I keep being like, I'm done, and then like, oh no, wait, I missed a spot. Careful, don't go extra, because we always do. Again, you can add as much or as little detail as you like. Now it's kind of come to life. The only thing I really didn't mess with in the background, or mess with with a white paint pen and the other stuff is the background. We want to keep that simple because we have so much detail here. Well, I hope you had fun with this. And um, if you came in partway through, you know, as soon as I end this, um, we give it like 30, 40 seconds and the replay should become available. And uh, then you can start from the beginning, but basically plots and circles, Plot some leaves, color them in, and then add the details. All right, you guys, you're the best. I love you, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.